Welcome to the fall. It's 7.21 a.m. Drop time to the United Federation of Britain. 17 minutes. Dropping in 60 seconds. Oh, has it ever occurred? is the means of transportation from the remake of the movie Total Recall from 2012. The movie imagines the world at the end of the 21st century. They have created a long tube, a hole, that goes through the center of the earth so that people in the UK can travel to Australia. They just drop a box through the deep hole, gravity pulls the box, it gains velocity in each way to the center of the earth, Right after crossing the core of the Earth at high speed, it goes up to the other side. Gravity reduces its velocity until it comes to a stop right at the other side. They claim that the fall takes 17 minutes to take you from one end to the other of the Earth. Let's do the math and see if this makes sense. This is an example of non-constant force. You remember the force from a spring, right? There the force was proportional to the position. As the bob was moving its position was changing and therefore the force of the spring was changing. Was not constant. We know from Newton that what is the force of gravity created by the Earth on any object on its surface? If you drop a pencil into a room it will accelerate until it hits the ground, but if there is no ground, it will continue accelerating. The thing here is that if the pencil or the box or the lift from the movie are dropped through that long cylindrical hole, we need to consider two things. First is that it accelerates, it gains the speed as it goes, let's say, from the UK until it reaches the core of the planet. The second thing is that the mass that is attracting the transport is less and less as the transport goes down and down. Remember from the previous video that the mass responsible for the gravitational attraction is that of the sphere and the feed. The mass of the planet that is above your head cancels as it pulls you in all directions with the same strength. This happens thanks to the symmetry of the planet, the sphere. So, if the mass of the Earth actively acting on the transport is being reduced as the transport travels to the center of the Earth, the force is also being reduced. As I said, we saw this in the previous video. What I want to calculate here now is the time it takes the transport to reach the other side of the Earth. For this, I will write Newton's second law, knowing that the force of F equals MA is the gravitational force of the spherical mass under the transport. First, let's consider the x-axis on the radius of the Earth with the origin at the core of the planet. This gives us a negative force as it is pointing to the center of the Earth. Minus GMM over x squared. Remember that the denominator of Newton's gravitational law is the distance squared. Here, the distance from the transport to the center of the Earth is designated by x instead of r. Lowercase m is the mass of the transport, and capital M is the mass of the sphere below the transport. Now, I'll write Newton's second law. Force equal to mass of the transport times its acceleration, and equal both equations. Now it is when you might want to rewatch the previous video on the gravitational force of the Earth as a function of the depth at which you are. For simplicity, I will assume that the density of the Earth is constant, which you know it is not, but you can complicate the problem and make it more realistic later. If the density of the planet is constant, then the mass can be written as density times volume. 
I will designate the density with the Greek letter Rho, which has nothing to do with any COVID variant. It is just a common letter for density in physics. I substitute the mass now in Newton's second law. Now, because the mass that attracts the transport is a sphere, the sphere below the transport, I write the volume as four-thirds of pi radius cubed. Why the radius is that of this sphere below the transport. Remember that we call it x in this exercise. I simplify this a bit and rearrange it. And I have that the acceleration is proportional to the negative position. Let's pause here for a bit to understand the physics of this and see that it makes a lot of sense. As the transport goes deep into the Earth, x is smaller, which means that the acceleration gets smaller, which makes sense as there is less mass exerting of force on the transport. Yes, the transport is moving faster and faster as it travels deeper and deeper, but the rate at which the speed increases gets smaller. That's the acceleration. Right at the core of the Earth, the position is zero, and the acceleration is zero, although the speed will be maximum. Now, look at this equation. The right-hand side is the force of gravity acting on the transport, and the left-hand side is the negative times a constant times the position. This is mathematically the elastic force of a spring. So the motion of the transport under the condition of a planet with constant density will be the same as that of a bob on a spring. This is an oscillatory motion, where the maximum speed is at the center of the trajectory and the maximum acceleration is at the extremes of that trajectory. Because that motion is periodic, it has a period of the oscillations. If we remember the result from the spring, the angular frequency was given by the square root of k over m. So in this case, the period of the oscillations, the time to go back and forth is But let me go back to this intermediate equation. Now I want to find the equation of motion of the transport. This is an equation that gives me the position as a function of time. I am going to cancel the masses of the transport and to write the acceleration as the second time derivative of the position with respect to time. where well, capital K is just a constant equal to 4 pi g rho over 3. Now, this is a differential equation. You might not be familiar with differential equations, and I don't expect you to know how to solve them. But let's have a look at it. A differential equation is one that contains the dependent variable, in our case, the position x and its derivatives with respect to the independent variable, in our case, time. We have here minus a constant times x equal to the second derivative of x. This means that the solution of this equation, the position as a function of time, has to be such that its second derivative is proportional to the negative function itself. Now, let's think of functions we know whose second derivative is minus a constant times itself. Well, thanks to trigonometric functions, the derivative of the sine function is the cosine, and the derivative of the cosine is the negative sine. So, if we derive the sine twice, we get first the cosine, and then negative the sine. If we derive the cosine, we get first the negative sine, and then the negative cosine. So, any of these functions should be a solution to this differential equation. Then we can write the solution, the position x, as x equal to a times the cosine of omega t plus phi. 
a, omega and phi are constants, phi is an integration constant that depends on the initial conditions. This is an oscillatory motion. a is the amplitude of the oscillatory motion, and omega is the angle of frequency of the oscillatory motion. Let me derive this equation twice. And let me rewrite it as which compared to this previous equation tells us that the angular frequency is the square root of capital K. Result that we had previously found. and therefore the period of the oscillations will be this result here. If you put the average density of the Earth and substitute in this equation, you will get that the time to go from the UK to Australia on the film should be of about 41 minutes divided by 2. Of course, this is just an approximation, as you already know that the density of the Earth is not constant. As a matter of fact, the density increases going down, which would increase the acceleration of the transport and make the trip a bit shorter than that. Also, there are other effects not considered in this exercise, as the rotation of the Earth, but that is out of the scope of this course. I'll let you let for you to explore the more realistic case of assuming three different densities, one for the crust, a higher one for the mantle, and a higher one for the core. In any case, I hope you got the big picture of this exercise. Be careful with holes on the ground and may science bear with you.